During the summer of 2012, I had a fabulous adventure in the Atlantic Ocean aboard the research vessel, the Hugh R. Sharp. I lived and worked on the ship for 11 days, studying sea scallops as part of the science team. While aboard, I met so many fascinating scientists with intriguing careers. I was so excited when some of them agreed to chat on video with Jinx West Intermediate 5th and 6th graders about their careers in science. So without further ado, let's meet the scientists. My name is Sean Lucy. Uh, I work for the Ecosystem Assessment Program where we uh, are transitioning from uh, single species management to ecosystem based management where it's more holistic and in taking into account interactions between species and humans and the environment. Most days, unlike out here, I'm, I'm in an office, uh, I go through data, uh, run statistical models, I map things out in GIS, uh, I write papers things like that. I think almost just about everything is the best part of my job. Uh, you know, from being out here collecting data out, out in the ocean to being back in the office and seeing what the data is telling us to writing papers and getting them published and uh, just everything about it is, is pretty cool. Karen Bowles. I work for the Habcam Group and the Habcam Group consists of um, Salt fishermen, independent scientists, and Hooli or Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution engineers and scientists. And my job is to come out to sea and fly half cam and make sure everything's working right. And then when I get back to land, I work up the images, which means I measure sculpts and fish, and I run the outreach program and education program, amongst other things. I really like coming out to sea, being at sea biologist. Um, I love working up the images. It's probably just about everything. I, I really love my job. Uh, my name is Jeff Shook. Uh, I'm a uh, survey technician with the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the National Marine Fisheries Branch. Um, and that means that my job is basically to come out to sea and uh, make these surveys happen and do whatever I can do to, uh, to make these surveys a success. So on this trip, uh, I'm the chief scientist, so I'm overseeing uh, all the data collection and all the science that's happening and stuff like that. I very often sail as a watch chief, which is uh, basically like a shift manager. Um, so essentially, I'm just out here making these surveys happen. Um, I would say one of the best parts is just, uh, is just coming out to sea. Um, I love being on the ocean, I love being at sea, and having a job uh, where I get, get paid to be out on the water is uh, it's just fantastic, it's amazing. Um, I get to see a lot of really cool creatures that, uh, that you know, a lot of people don't ever get to see, will never get to see, and they're just, uh, just a part of my day-to-day -day job. Um, I also I get to work with all the meat, the meat and uh, work with a lot of really cool people. Um, you know, every trip is a different group of people, you know, yourself, uh, Chris over here, everybody else on our, on our watch. Uh, it's just really neat to, to meet people from different areas and uh, kind of introduce them to the science that we do. Jared Schwartz. I work at uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I'm an engineer there. The best part of my job is that um, I'm basically a contract engineer, so I work with one group of scientists for a portion of time, and then once I'm done with that project, I can move on to another. So I'm constantly jumping around, doing new things, learning new things, so I never really get bored in what I'm doing. Um, the one that we're working on now, Habcam, I helped design it, so I did a, basically took a drawing somebody did on a pad of paper, and I made it into a 3D model so we could really look at it, study it, um, you could see how strong it was, how much it weighed, and then break it down and see how much all the materials would actually cost to build. What kind of training or experience did you have to have to get this job? Uh, 
I think for pretty much any kind of science job, uh, it, you really need a, a minimum of a bachelor's degree, you know, from a four-year college. Uh, I have a master's degree and I'm, I'm working on my PhD, so, you know, the further you go along in school, the, the better jobs you can get in the field, but uh, at least a minimum of a bachelor's degree. And then I spent a lot of time out at sea uh, learning on the job as well. I, I had a lot of experience in image analysis in my past, and I have a master's degree, so both of those things kind of helped, and I did a lot of education, outreach work in the past, and worked with kids, so that also helped. So all those things combined um, got me this job, and I had also worked with people okay. in this group before. I went to um, the University of Rhode Island and did ocean engineering as my major in college, and uh, then I actually, the way I got into it, Hui was doing a lot of scuba diving in school, and I got in through scuba diving a lot, and then they needed some engineers, and that's when I moved up. Um, well, I have, I have a, a degree in fishery technology from the University of Rhode Island. I've got my bachelor's in science right now. Uh, most of the people that work with us have a degree in uh, some sort of a, a science background, some sort of a marine science background, uh, but we have a couple of people that work with us that uh, just kind of came into this uh, from a very different direction. A guy that I used to work with was actually a phys ed major, um, and he kind of he got involved. He kind of he wasn't finding finding any jobs uh, in the, the physical education field, so he ended up with us. So for really from all 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 different directions. What advice would you give to a fifth or sixth grade student who wants to work in your field someday? Uh, just find something that you, you really enjoy working on and learn as much as you can. Uh, and just uh, perseverance is a real big key too. It's, it can be hard to get a, a, a job in this field. Uh, you know, they're very limited. So you gotta put in some hard work and then do some things that maybe aren't exactly what your ideal job is. Uh, to, to just get your foot in the door and, and keep working at it and then eventually you'll be a, in a position to, to do what you love. I would say it's, it's a good idea to volunteer and go spend your time around the scientists and um, just get your experience that way and get to know people and do networking. Uh, I would say, you know, for, for one thing, just uh, look out for opportunities and take any opportunities that you can get uh, to, to kind of experience field science. Uh, you know, classroom learning is very important, but uh, trying to do some learning and experiencing things outside of the classroom is, is definitely an important aspect of it. Um, that's how I got started. It will, just advice for any of them was, would be to go with what you love, because I love the ocean, always grew up around it, and just got very comfortable with it, and I went with what I wanted to do. And so that's how um, I actually learned a lot about it and to learn with ocean engineering because it was something I wanted. And that's, it was, it was perfect for me. Um, what do you think is most important for a fifth grade student to kind of know or have it to develop as they're starting to kind of become scientists? I think definitely learning to study and, and go through uh, being detail-oriented, kind of, uh, to make sure that you're not missing something and you're collecting, it, it goes to collecting data, making sure that you're collecting it the right way and, and everything you need, and then <clears throat> building it in the models and writing and just being very precise in everything you do. Um, I know they probably don't want to hear it, but just basic, like, math skills, just like get comfortable with everything because, I mean, doing normal everyday problems and questions and stuff, I'll, I do use it a lot actually and I can just quickly jot down and go through equations and things that are needed for what I'm doing and it helps me get through each day a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Uh, well, I would say, you know, definitely you always want to keep an open mind and really just think that, think that anything is possible. Um, you know, it's when you become closed-minded and if you think, if you decided you already know all you can about something uh, or that you, you know for sure the way something works, um, you know, that
that's when you can stop learning. You don't ever want to stop learning. So you always, always want to be open to the idea of bringing in new information and, and changing your point of view.